Okay, in this video, I'll show you guys how to differentiate this function right here. And in the end, you'll see that there's actually a nice simplification and also another question that I would like to ask. But first of all, I would like to know, I kind of forgot what's the derivative of inverse tangent x. Hmm. Ah, it's 1 over 1 plus x squared. But since this right here, we have this thing, so you have to make sure you put that into something squared, right? Anyway, enough talking. Let's go ahead and do the work. Y prime. So we first get 1 over 1 plus this thing squared. So we will have x minus square root of x squared plus 1. And then we square that. And then by the chain rule, we have to multiply by the derivative of inside. So the C derivative x is 1. And then we will minus the derivative of the square root function is 1 over 2. And then you keep the square root like this, right? So let me just write it down. Like that. But the derivative of the inside right here is 2x. So by the chain rule again, we have to multiply this by 2x. Like that. And then we can close it. So this is pretty much the calculus step. And the rest is just the beauty of algebra. We will see that this actually simplifies really well. OK, this is how we are going to do it. First, I will keep 1. And then this is over. I have 1 right here. And then we add. I'm going to multiply this out. This is in the form of a minus b squared. So we get a squared, namely x squared. And then minus 2 times this and that. So let me put down minus 2x and the square root of x squared plus 1. And lastly, we have to add this square, which is just x squared plus 1. And next, let's see. Hmm, the tooth cancel. Sure, why not? <laughs> but we do notice we can add the fractions up, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Let me multiply the bottom at the top by this, which is the square root of x squared plus 1. And as I said, we have to do it on the top as well. And for this right here, we will have, uh, let me just use the parentheses, it doesn't really matter. I'll just write down this right here. And we are combining fraction. Okay, this is the minus. So the denominator stays the same. Right? So I'll just write down square root of x squared plus 1. And for the top, we have this, which is square root of x squared plus 1 minus x, right? So that's what we have. And what can we do next, though? I see that we have 1 plus 1. That's 2. Yes. And then this is the x squared plus another x squared. That's 2x squared. But notice we do have another 2 right here. So I can factor the 2s from those three terms, right? So let me do that. This is going to be 1 on the top over the 2 in the front, right? And then we multiply by 1 plus 1 is 2, but the 2 is out already, so this is 1. This plus that is 2x squared, but the 2 is out already, so it's plus x squared. And we factor out this 2 right here, so we minus x, square root of x squared plus 1, like this. OK, what should we do with this term, though, this part of the fraction? I don't like this top too much, because we can simplify it with um, conjugate. <laughs> Let's do that. Why not? So let me multiply the top by square root of x squared plus 1. And hopefully this is going to work, right? Conjugate sometimes may not work, but it should. Plus x. And then do the same thing on the denominator. x squared plus 1 plus x. Well, on the top, I'm just going to multiply this out first. So this is in the form of a minus b times a plus b, we get a squared, which is x squared plus 1. And then minus b squared, which is just x squared. So we have x squared. And you see the beauty of this is that x squared cancel each other out. So on the top, you have just the 1. Now for the denominator, let's do the same thing. Let's distribute. Right? And we see that this times that is just inside. But this is the second fraction, so let's go ahead and put down a big parenthesis right here. This times this is x squared plus 1. And then this times that is plus 
x square root of x squared plus 1, like this. OK, what is next? Well, well, look at this is x squared plus 1, and we happen to have 1 plus x squared, so of course they are the same. If you would like, you can change the water so that it matches with that, right? But better yet, this minus that, this plus that. So this is in the form of a minus b times a plus b. If you do this grouping, it's, right? This is the a, this is the b, this is the a, this is the b. When you multiply that out, you just do a squared minus b squared. So that's what we are going to do. We have 1 times 1 on the top, which is just 1, over, let me just put a 2 all the way in the front, and then, open the parentheses, I will have to do this square, which is 1 plus x squared, and then square that, and then minus this, putting the parentheses and square that, right? So perhaps I'll make the minus in red. And then we have the x square root of x squared plus 1, in this parentheses, and then square, and other parentheses for that. <sighs> okay, uh, I'm still surviving. <laughs> so let's see, let's multiply this out. This is 1 plus x squared, so a plus b squared, right? So we will have to get 1 squared, which is 1, plus 2 times this and that, which is just 2x squared. And then we add this square, which is x to the fourth power. Next, we minus this thing square. This is just a product of x and that. So you can just do x squared right here. And then when you square this, you just get a parentheses. So I will put this down right here in red. And inside x squared plus 1. And we will get minus x to the 4. And then this times that is minus x square. And now check this out. The x to the fourth power minus, minus x to the fourth power, they cancel each other out nicely. And then we can combine this and that, of course. So in the end, what do we get? The one on the top, right? And then over, still the two all the way in the front. And we have the parentheses. And we have, this is the one. And then 2x squared minus x squared is positive x squared. And ladies and gentlemen, this right here is our derivative for that function. But do you recognize what this is, though? If you cover the 2, what's this? 1 over x, 1 over 1 plus x squared. That's the derivative of inverse tangent x by itself, isn't it? And when you have the 1 half, you can just multiply by 1 half. So let me make a note right here. If you differentiate um, inverse tangent, so let me just put this down, inverse tangent x, and as I discussed it with you guys, this right here, we get 1 over 1 plus x squared. But we can modify this a little bit by multiply by 1 half. So we can do the 1 half like this. In another word, this function and this function, they both have the same derivative, isn't it? Right? They have the same derivative. So does that mean this function and that function are equal to each other? Well, almost. Almost. Because it could be this function plus 5, because if you have a, another constant, and then you differentiate that constant, you still end up with the same derivative. It can be plus pi, you still end up with this. So the function part-wise, they are equal, but the constant part may be different. So this is what we call the, these two functions might be off by a constant. So here is what I want to show you. We know that I can say this right here, namely, inverse tangent of x minus square root of x squared plus 1. This right here, it's in fact equal to 1 half inverse tangent x. 
but we just have to put a constant somewhere on one side. I can just say plus some unknown constant, I'll just say plus C. Well, if you want to come up with a nice identity, this is what you can do. You can just pick a nice number for X, plug in, and then work it out, and you can figure out what C should be. And I will do that for you guys. You cannot get any easier than zero, so let's go ahead and do zero. Let X equal to zero, and you get inverse tangent of zero minus square root of zero square plus one, and then this is equal to one half inverse tangent of zero and then plus C. This part is inverse tangent. You pretty much have negative square root of one, which is negative one. And inverse tangent of zero is zero, times one half is still zero. So this right here is just zero, and you just get C. This is negative pi over four. So yeah, <laughs> very nice. This crazy function is nothing but one half inverse tangent x minus pi over four. So I will show you guys, this is the grand finale. Inverse tangent of x minus square root of x squared plus one is equal to one half inverse tangent of x. In the end, you minus the pi over four. So this is one way to show that both trig expressions are equal by using derivative. So this is the calculus way to prove the trig identity, if you would like. And anyway, this is it. Hopefully you guys all like this video. And if you guys do, please subscribe to my channel. And um, just go back, just go review your derivatives, all that stuff. And that would be really nice. Anyway, that's it.